Hey guys, it's Alex from 7th Hour Films, back again with Doctor Who. Last time on Doctor Who, we had uh, Human Nature. Excuse me, I forgot the title for a second. We had Human Nature, where uh, the Doctor and Martha were being hunted down by a group of aliens called the Family. And in order to escape them, uh, at least the plan was to escape them, by having the Doctor become human and sort of forget that he's a Time Lord and not be a Time Lord anymore. <coughs> yeah, excuse me. Real interesting stuff, real interesting uh, indeed. Um, yeah, so basically that's, that's kind of just what happened. Uh, we ended up in 1913 at this prep school or something, I don't know, some some British school thing, uh, or as I like to call it, the land of the posh shits, because that's what it was. Uh, these were the snobbiest of British people I've ever seen, uh, which was interesting. And uh, one of them, actually, you guys told me, the one that's initially uh, possessed by one of the members of the family is actually played by the guy who plays Viserys Targaryen in Game of Thrones. Which is pretty cool, actually. And, uh, apparently he's also the great-great-grandson of Charles Dickens. Isn't that interesting? So, yeah, that's... I, well, okay, um... Other people got possessed by the family. And, uh, at the end, they're trying to... Martha was trying to get the doctor to remember who he actually is. And the family came in and was like, hey, uh, we're going to pull an arrow and you can either save uh, this person or this person. You choose. Um, so, and it was left on a cliffhanger and we will have to see where we go from here. Um, yeah, that's pretty much that. Um, and before we get going, let me just say no spoilers in the comments whatsoever. Let's uh, keep the comments Focus to this episode and previous episodes of both uh, Doctor Who and Torchwood that I have reacted to. And in terms of classic Doctor Who spoilers, just be very, very vague about it. I don't want a whole huge thing about, um, I don't want a huge plot dump of something that happened uh, in classic Doctor Who. And with all that being said, let's get right into this episode of Doctor Who. Here we go. Too scared. Scared and holding a gun's good combination. Do you want to risk it? Yeah. Come on. I think Martha would do it. Yeah. Mr. Smith, I think you should escort your lady friend to safety, don't you? Man, Martha's really coming through on this. Let's go to school. <laughs> this freaking guy. This guy was born to overact. Do you have to skip around? It's just weird. With me, we should investigate. No, but it's not safe out there. Mr. Smith, it seems your favorite servant has given me advice. You will control her, sir. What the fuck? God. What do you know of next year? You're not making sense. Right? 1914. Uh, yeah. Sir. Foreign fields, war of the whole wide world, with all your boys falling down in the mud. Yeah. Do you think they will thank the man who taught them it was glorious? Don't you forget why. War is not glorious, and especially not the South First Africa. World War. I use my dead mate. We shall stand against them. Sir. Yes, sir. Okay, if you say so. Soldiers! This is so weird. And it's not helped by his acting, which is just insanity. Women might try to be doctors, but hardly this skivvy and hardly one of your colour. Oh, do you think? <laughs> Jeez. Bones of the hand. The doctor can't escape. You with Armitage and Flight. I mean, he never has access to the TARDIS and he always wins, so. It's not for you and me. What are you babbling about? They'll survive. Yeah. Right alongside. They'll make it to the war. Here, you are Ugh. Oh no. Keep away. 
Who are you? Who are you? The dance. Does she really want to see this? Oh! Oh! No, that's all we need to find the boy and the watch. Oh, they don't need the body, they just need. They just need the essence of a Time Lord. But why do they need a Time Lord? Uh. Um. This music is weird. John, are you gonna shoot? John didn't even fire a single shot. Jeez. The Cartwright girl, isn't it? Come here, come to me. Mr. Rockhart, no, please. Don't go near her. You were told to be quiet. Just and you were told to, to shut the fuck up. Uh, that would allow me to see this child in the field of battle, sir. Come with me. You're I hate you. That's right. Take my hand. So funny. Dumbass. Lord of time. Make it a beacon. Well, he he is saving people by leading them away, but he just he just needs to give the watch back to John. At least I think. Ah, oh, crap! They took the TARDIS out there. Time to end it now. You recognize it, don't you? It's the TARDIS. That is the biggest amount. It's the biggest amount of proof. That what she's saying is true. And his love. Why can't I be John Smith? Isn't he a good man? Oh, man. Why can't I stay? Bringing John Smith having an existential crisis. That sucks. I'm just a story. Well, no. You're not a story. Fix targets. And counting down. Man, they really did a lot with- they're doing a lot with their eyes and stuff like that. Should be empty. Gotta keep that eye acting going. Long time since I've run that far. What exactly do you do for him? Why does he need you? Company. He's lonely. Yeah. And that's what you want me to become. <laughs> that's a- it's a good point, though. And he's wonderful. Yeah. He's a great guy. It's like it's you, if you were so much more adventurous, basically. Just stories. That you is him, adventure. though. Perhaps there's something in him. You knew this all along, and yet you watched while those Redfern and I. I didn't know how to stop you. Yeah, how do you stop love? So trouble, but that wasn't included. <laughs> Falling in love? That didn't even occur to him. <laughs> no. No, it doesn't. The doctor said the family's got a limited lifespan. That's why they need to consume a time lord. Okay. Oh. They die. That makes like sense. Mayflies, he said. So your job was to execute me. It's not People like that, dying though. Dying out there. Those creatures would live forever. To breed and conquer a war across the stars. Yeah. For every child. Martha, Timothy, would you? Leave us alone, please. Yeah. You gotta convince him to do it. <laughs> they are not making a convincing argument for him to be the doctor again. He won't love you. If he's not you, he I might. Don't want him to. I, I guess that's true. Oh, the life he'll never have. He can't have that life if he opens it, though. Wait, did he... Did he live his entire life? You see? Still human. Is he? No, I can't. I can't pretend to understand. Not for a second. But I want you to know, I'm innocent in all this. He made Wait, me John Smith. Is it a trick? Not like, like I had any control over it. Like, just make himself human. Last. Uh, I don't know. I think he 
I think he's tricking them. Don't think that saved your life. I'm gonna leave my hand. You keep pressing buttons. It's There's empty. Nothing. Because fuck you, I'm the doctor. Where's it gone? You tell me. Oh, I think the explanation might be you've been fooled by a simple olfactory misdirection. <gasps> it's a bit like ventriloquism of the nose. Yes. It's an elementary trick in some parts. Because if there's one thing you shouldn't have done, you shouldn't have let me press all those buttons. Ooh. But, there fact, was a reason for it all. I love it. Advice. Oh my gosh, he hit. He's blowing it up. Oh my gosh, I love it. And then we discovered why. <coughs> why this doctor, who had fought with gods and demons, why he'd run away from us and hidden. He was being kind. Oh, he wrapped my father in unbreakable chains forged in the heart of a dwarf star. Whoa. Collapsing galaxy to be imprisoned there. He trapped her inside a mirror. Every mirror. As what for me, I was suspended in time, and the doctor put me to work standing over the fields of England as their protector. Oh. We wanted to live forever. So the doctor made sure that we did. <gasps> Damn! Good God! John Smith? He's in here somewhere. He's like a story. Part of John. Or Could you change part of the right? doctor now. Yes. Jeez, man. Not exactly the happy ending we're used to on this show. Right then. What's the ending? Off we go. We could get hurt. Hmm. Also, well, could you? Traveling around with him, but it's not going to stop you. <laughs> Tim. <coughs> you're in more danger. If you take this. Take the watch. Can't do anything Can't anymore, but... And this is the time. It's now. Oh man. To the right. to the right. oh. oh, they lived. Sweet. Oh, it's after. Oh, it's long after the war. And in the morning, we will remember them. Well, yay, he survived. We didn't get the Doctor Who music at the end. Oh my gosh. All right. All right. Um. Oh, excuse me. I've been coughing this entire episode. Jeez Louise. Oh, on a Pepsi too. So. Hmm. All right. Wow. That was. That was really great. That was really, really great. I really enjoyed that. Um, yeah. I've got <laughs> some notes um, that we can talk about here. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, uh. Yeah, now I'm burping too. Try, I'm trying to burp away from the microphone so that uh, so that it doesn't catch as much. Although you probably heard some of that. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's still a little new to me using my nice microphone, but uh, yeah. Anyway. <coughs> okay, so uh, notes. Uh, I wrote down kid um, Timothy, who I figured out his name later. Yay. Um, Timothy, interesting, interesting. So, okay, when he first showed up last episode, they talked about him guessing things. Like, he said, like, well, I can, I guess things and sometimes they come true. So I kind of thought there was something interesting about, like, there's something about him naturally that's different 
But the way they portrayed it here, it's like, no, he's still... He was just normal and... Oh, sorry. Shook the entire table doing that. Um, it's not necessarily that there was something interesting about him, but he still gained, like... He was able to see the future through the watch and through the Doctor's essence. So that was interesting, and it was also interesting that he just wasn't giving the watch to John Smith for the longest time, you know? Um, sorry, I'm just adjusting something on the, uh, on my computer. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, he, he just wasn't giving John Smith the watch for the longest time, and I just, and I was sitting here like, why isn't he doing that? But I do like the explanation that he was, he was afraid. He was just scared and didn't know really what was happening. So I get that. I mean, he is a kid. It was, I will grant you, it was a little weird seeing him in the full army getup. It's like, he seems like he would be a little young for that, but I don't know if he's like, I don't know. It, it's hard to, it's hard to determine how old they all were. Like maybe I could see him being 13 or 14 and maybe some of the older kids like, 16 17 maybe 18 at the most so i don't know he just seemed very young so when they showed him you know on the battlefields of world war one it did seem a little strange to me like why is he you know on the battlefield he seems way too young but i don't know maybe the draft age was really young in britain too who knows uh, I wrote down TL question mark as in why did they need a Time Lord and now I understand it because initially like um, they said in the recap which I missed last episode but um, the reason that the Doctor and Martha were hiding out was because they were waiting for the family to die because the family has such a short lifespan which is interesting so I kept wondering it's like why do they need a Time Lord and they specifically said, like, they don't need the Doctor, they just need a Time Lord. Oh, excuse me. So, with that, basically, like, they were going to absorb a Time Lord to become immortal, basically. Which is very interesting. And, yeah, it's just a very interesting concept that they specifically need a Time Lord. They don't even need, um... They don't even need the Doctor specifically, they just need a Time Lord. So that was interesting. Uh, I wrote down John Smith because, holy crap. It's... It's interesting because... I mean, I can't... No, unfortunately, I can't think of a... I can't think of a great example of this, but... There have been stories where, you know... The main character or something, you know has to take on this alternate personality but we've never i've never really seen the character the alternate personality just not want to go back to being who they were like he did not want to go back to being the doctor at all like he was downright like no screw the doctor i don't want to be him i want to be me you know and he was so emotional and it's crazy great performance by david tennant but yeah, he just was not, I don't know, he was not having it. He did not want to be the doctor, which was so interesting. So, and especially like, you know, it's like not only has he had this sort of life as John Smith, but he's also sort of, he's seen the future, his future. If John Smith was able to still exist, he saw his entire future all the way to his death. And that's interesting. And he saw it and it's like, I could have that. The doctor can't have that, but I could have that. But still, he chooses to do the right thing and he becomes the doctor again, which is amazing writing. I really do love that. And then, um, and then the, the fact that John Smith is a part of the doctor now, like that's, he remembers everything. He is... John Smith is a part of the Doctor now, but he's still the Doctor. It's the same way that um, 
it's the same thing as in uh, Star Trek The Next Generation. They did an episode where Picard, like, lived an entirely alternate life. Like, years and years and years of an alternate life that he had. And then, like, at the end of the episode, I think he, like, died. And then he woke up back as Picard. He was on the Enterprise again. But he remembered everything. He lived this entire life. And, you know, like, it still all happened to him to the point where, you know, in his alternate life, you know, he spent years and years and years, like, playing the flute. And then when he came back to being Picard, and we're talking, like, it's like he went to sleep. And then, like, a couple hours later, he woke up having lived this entire life and he gets up he gets he like gets a flute and he plays it flawlessly like that's basically what happened i really love that's a great story in next gen so to kind of have that here although to be fair a lot of john smith's life didn't happen you know because like they were saying like you know what do you remember about your childhood and he he didn't remember very real specifics because John Smith didn't really exist except for this small period of time when the Doctor had to pretty much stop being a Time Lord. Only for this amount of time did John Smith exist, but it was such... It was so important, and now all of that is the Doctor, which is great, and I love that. Um, oof. Ooh, Sorry. Um, it's around lunchtime, so my hands are starting to get shaky. I'm starving, so, um, ooh, yeah, ooh, okay. These hands are getting really shaky, uh, so I'm going to wrap this up soon so I can go get something to eat. Um, so the last thing I wrote down was kind, because I love what he said. It's like, the reason the doctor has faced off against many things, gods and demons and stuff like that, and the reason he didn't fight the family, the reason why he decided to hide was to be kind. And it's like, what? And then he starts going through just how the doctor punished them. Because the doctor, the doctor's not going to kill them. But he's going to make them suffer. You know, the father, you know, in these unbroken, these unbreakable chains. The mother who is sent in the middle of a collapsing galaxy to stay there for all eternity. The daughter who was trapped inside every single mirror in existence. And him who was frozen, basically frozen in time and placed as a scarecrow in England. It's like, holy crap, that is dark. Like, the doctor, that is no, there's no more mercy. That his original plan of hiding until they died, that was his mercy. And now the doctor, he just let loose and just utterly just took them down and put them in the, in these hells. And I love that. It's so crazy, but I love that. So, yeah, that was, that was insane. So, yeah, that's basically all I wrote great two-parter um is it my favorite is it my favorite part of this series i don't know i'd have to look at what we've had so far give me a sec um i really did like shakespeare code and gridlock was pretty good um yeah i'd probably say this two-parter has been the best of uh, series three so yeah um that is basically it for this video with all that being said i'm alex from seventh hour films and i will see you guys next time take care hey guys thanks for watching this video if you want to watch more of my doctor who reactions you can click the playlist it's somewhere around here and uh if you want to support the channel in another way you can support me on patreon for as little as one dollar a month you can also follow me on social media, links below in the description, you can subscribe if you haven't done that already. See you later.